Okay, so we have extra time. Is everybody cool if I kind of talk about like the rancher catalog? Like, does that seem interesting to, to folks? Sure. Um, okay, so I'll talk into about rancher catalog a little bit. So I'm going to do kind of a brief chat over rancher just for like um, remembering how this kind of stuff is set up. So if you remember rancher itself, this like rancher server is really just a uh, like a dumb web server in which you add slaves to it. Um, so you can view, like there's this kind of section of environments. Environments are a group of slaves, if you really think about it that way. So most of the time people use it as like a prod environment, testing environment, or whatever. But really it could be whatever you want. It could be, uh, it's just a set of servers that you've associated to it that you're going to deploy services to. So that's pretty much it. Um, if we look at managing environments, it also allows you per environment and per slave, you can choose the orchestration layer you have. So it can be everything from like cattle, Kubernetes, Mesos, Swarms. There's the Windows container stuff now. I haven't messed with that. I don't really want to. Um, but the other ones are pretty rad. I imagine the Windows stuff is pretty rad too. I just hate Windows. Um, so anyways, <laughs> side note for anybody who's watching the video. Um, All depends on the definition of rad. Yeah, fair. <laughs> so the aspect here is right now we can see like there's some other stuff that I'm, I'm doing and messing around with different environments. Uh, test is inactive. I don't know why I created test. I probably was doing something with somebody. But anyways, uh, stacks are, if you can think of it as a set of services that are related to each other. So if we were to look at this, we have a project that's like a spot project that is really that could be a, right now I only has one service but it could be a set of services so it could include like a database service uh, maybe an LDAP service um, the actual web services it's just a set of group it's kind of more of like a grouping of services that you want to logically allocate and then services are really can be one or more containers that represent what that service is doing so if we were to look for example at a sent master is probably a good one that has a database as well as a web and an LDAP server. So we see that there's an LDAP server here that is just a generic like testing sample LDAP server for a web service that connects to that to that service. So usually um, without going too much into it, it can be multiple containers, but in this case I'm just going to kind of like leave it at one container. Um, the example that I'm going to give here is that we have our CD pipe, like our CI CD, or really it's our CI pipeline is based off drone. Which really, if you kind of ignore this drone DB, which is just a link to the database that it uses behind the scenes, uh, drone itself depends on two services. It depends on a web client and then an agent that does the builds for us. So whenever we commit something, it goes to the, like the, the drone server, and then the drone server hands it out to the agent to say, hey, go build this thing that I told you to build. So if you were to set this up normally, it means that you have to create the stack like I did earlier with the test. I have to then add a service. I'm going to add all those environment variables and all that crap that's in there. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to set up, especially if you want to like reuse like the same th stuff over and over or make it publicly available. Like let's say you create an open source project where you want to make everybody be able to like easily deploy this on a rancher server. There's this thing called the catalog, which if you remember, that's where I went initially with um, looking for let's encrypt uh, let's encrypt so this let's encrypt is actually a rancher catalog item what it does is it allows you to quickly say hey look I've got this you know read me on like how to be able to deploy this now I'm going to have all these like UI options on how to fill this out of, and these are just like environment variables or configurations on the containers on how to be able to deploy that. But you don't need to go and say, hey, create a stack, create a service, and have to inherently have all this knowledge about the container itself. right? So you don't need to know what the environment variable names are. You don't need to know like what are the dependencies between the services and all that kind of stuff. I can just fill out some UI stuff and done, it gets deployed. Um, so. The interesting thing, and let me go back to the presentation real quick. Where's this guy? 
do, 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 keynote. So a couple things that I'm going to mention with this is the Rancher catalog. Um, so it can be a template for environments and services. Uh, I won't go too much into details in that. But what it really is is just a Git repo with text files. That's it. So it allows you to make the templates of the services you have to be reused and shared. So like, for example, with Drone, how I had to deploy it, I have to know a lot of inherent knowledge about it. And that's what we're going to look at in just a second on the example of like the Drone PR that I have and um, just making that template. So here you can see that there's this Josmo um, catalog. And what that actually comes from is if you look at, uh, let's go to my GitHub account. And there's this community catalog. So all I did is I forked the community catalog and I created a what it's called Drone 5 branch on it to be able to like do my updates that I wanted to it. And now in Drone, if you go to settings, you can see that you can add a catalog where you just say, hey, where's my Git repo? What's the branch that I want to link? And then put it to Josmo. And now Josmo automatically shows up. And this is going to be everything that's within that Git repo as catalog items. Now, this is a duplicate of the community catalog with just the modifications I made, but this could easily be like individual services that we create or that we want to make public or that we want to share as a team or an organization. Um, the example that comes up to mind in my, in my mind for like Nordstrom or for like large corporations is the idea of saying, look, let's say everybody has a logging service that they want the entire corporation to have. You could say, look, I'm going to create this container. I'm going to have a couple configuration items to, uh, to give like what are, like what maybe is the service name that's being logged, what's my team name, my cost center, things like that in it. And then all of a sudden somebody can deploy a logging service without really having to know anything about the innate details of it. And you're not depending on a centralized group to maintain the availability of the service. I'm like, our group is responsible for it, but I can easily deploy it without knowing all the inner mechanics. Does that all make sense to folks? Is there like something that doesn't quite make sense here? Okay, I'll take silence as being like, yay. <laughs> Looking at what that looks like in reality, so let's look at drones since that's the one that I was updating. What we can see is that there's template versions. So you see how there's like, oh, there's a Rancher 1, Rancher 2, 4.4. Now there's the 0.05 version of it. So there's actually three template versions historically that this goes back to. And 0.05, you can see that has like a bunch of configuration items. This literally, if we filled out the environment variables that make sense for like drone admins, if it was for GitHub, which in our case it is using GitHub, we'd have the GitHub client and secret. Um, and that would be pretty much it, the organization and then a database. And then when we would launch it, it would launch the exact same configuration that was in that stack. It would create the stack, create the dependent services, and you're ready to go. Uh, the cool thing with that is also if there's an upgrade that's compatible for a newer version of it, when you go to the service, it will actually say, hey, upgrade available. You're able to upgrade. You click upgrade, it upgrades all the services to the latest stuff and just works, uh, which is a pretty rad way to approach like development of new services. What that looks like in reality is let's open up IntelliJ and I will take a gander at what these mystical files that like look like because I mean if you think about it normally you think well do I have to create the UI for like those text boxes to be able to enter all that stuff like how does that really work um, it's behind the scenes just YAML configuration files so here what we can see and let's close this you can see like drone remember how I was saying there was three versions of drone here's actually just the three you just literally name the versions that are available so there's version 0 and if we were to look at this guy we would see that in Rancher Compose there's going to be this version and that's what we actually saw in the UI so the UI will actually display here's the version so if we go back here you can actually see oh look that's what it is so that's there's just a specific format that we follow and we can say hey that's that's just how it inherently works it's really dependent on two files for um, cattle at least. So you have the Docker Compose, which is standard Compose. It's going to say, look, you know, we've got uh, 
drone load balancer that's there. We've got the health check of like, hey, well, how do we define what's the health check? The server, uh, drone daemon, that's actually all the 0.4 stuff. I don't know that stuff super well. So let's look at the latest one. That's the 0.5 version. So Docker Compose, here what we can see is that there's two services. There's the agent that we saw in there. Um, it has the drone secret that's shared, but you can see that this is like an inviable an inv or a variable that gets injected somehow. So we'll see about that in just a second. Then you can see that there's drone. Uh, here's all these environment variables that get injected in, and here's all the variables that will replace them. What we see though is that in the Rancher Compose, which is this guy, we end up having this catalog item that then has, hey, here's like the version, which again is what gets displayed in the UI. There's the upgrade, upgrade from, which is interesting. This means that you can only upgrade from version 0 0.50. That means if somebody had 0.4, it won't give them the option to upgrade from this. They would have to tear down their stack and create a new one. Um, that's essentially if you have breaking changes. So if, for example, 0.5 has different environment variables or configurations than 0.4, you can't upgrade to 0.5 because it just doesn't know what those things are. So it allows you to say, look, I'm going to upgrade my services and eventually, if you want to get the latest, you need to like figure out what you want to do. It's, there's not really a programmatic way for it to like just know that stuff. These questions are actually all the UI questions. So if we look here, all these questions that come up, these are all created based on the type that they are. So if you see open registration is true or false, so that's probably a Boolean. So open registration and you can see, oh yeah, it's a Boolean. You can set what is the default, is it required? There's a bunch of stuff that, that actually comes up on here as options. And this drone open is what you'll see as far as like, if we look in our Docker Compose, you can see drone open. So this will actually get injected as that environment variable on configuration launch. And then the rest is just the standard rancher. It's basically saying, in this case, it's saying, hey, just create one of these, create one of these, and when you create, start it, uh, start the service. Those are like cattle-specific configurations, and that's pretty much it. The, co the cool thing in my mind on this is that this is not just for cattle. You can actually see that since the orchestration layers work differently, you can actually create Kubernetes-specific templates or Mesos or whatever your orchestration layer is. You can say, hey, here's... Here's how I define what it should look like with some templating around it, and it will create a UI for you to auto-generate and deploy those stacks or pods or whatever to your services. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's, um, I was going to go into an example on how to be able to turn one of our services into it, uh, but we don't really have time for it. Um, so it's kind of like open for questions on like what are you guys' thoughts? Uh, do you have any questions on like how it works behind the scenes or what it could be useful for or or like whatever? So questions? Going once, twice. Was it like yay, boo, useful, not useful? Like I have no idea what you're talking about. A lot, a lot of information at once. Fair. Uh, it definitely is. It probably makes more sense once you've used Rancher a little while, um, or even like done like container orchestration, because they, it, it's hard to grasp like the value in it until you've actually gone out and like tried to deploy the stuff and like, hey, how do I make this reusable for more than just me, but for like an entire group? This is really fundamentally more for like, if you build a product that's like, for example, Let's Encrypt. It's a great example for them to have that as a container in here. Um, somebody created the Let's Encrypt container catalog item so that when you set up the environment, it just launches and you don't have to know any of the like background behind it. Um, oh, one last thing I was going to mention actually on there that the read, so the, this little guy that gives you all the, the directions here for the usage and all that stuff. All it is is a markdown readme. So whatever is in here is what gets displayed there. So again, it's what's really rad about it is it's very like a couple configuration and text files just gives you a shit ton of flexibility in how to configure it. So anyways, I would definitely advise like, hey, 
if you guys want to like set up your own rancher server mess with this a little bit and try to see like what happens it doesn't take a lot of work you can probably do it i imagine on like a micro instance or whatever with like just to maybe, spin it up maybe and... a small probably small i would go with a small um yeah. versus a micro uh, but i think i started it the first time around on micro and worked it just was really slow i get i get like 50 50 with the micro sometimes i think it seems to be the mood of the internet yeah, well, I mean, yeah, and there's like bursting stuff and all that kind of stuff. That's interesting. So anyways, I'm going to stop recording now and then we can like chat and drink and whatnot more afterwards. But that was kind of like the, the end of this. So, yay. Woo.